Okay, so this is an example of something that I'm going to be throwing out that I've been holding on to for an awful long time. And it's got a lot of memories associated with it. And uh, I really wanted to keep it around as long as I possibly could. But it's just I need the space for other things, so it's, it's time to let go. So first of all, this is something I made while I was at the MIT Media Lab uh, near about the middle of my dissertation project, the electric eels. And those are some uh, generator, in an attempt to make electronic instruments that played like acoustic instruments in so far as they could be taken anywhere and didn't have to be plugged in. You didn't have to stop to set up cables and adjust digital settings and all that stuff that slows down digital electronics, but we like the sound. So that project uh, took me in a number of directions simultaneously, in the synthesis direction, in the instrument design direction, the acoustics direction, in the media theory direction. There were a lot of, it, it was just perfect uh, can of worms to jump into. And I've made videos about some of the other things that have come out of that project and getting rid of. And so this was special to me for so many reasons that uh, I just kind of finally got to let go and just get it all out there. Basically, it's, it's an interesting shaped body. You know, I started realizing that when, when you have electronic instruments, you know, they're made of metal or plastic, and they just have electrical outputs. They don't have the built-in speakers. You know, that's, that's a loudspeaker's job or a stereo's job or whatever. But when you have the speakers built in, you do have to attend to the acoustics somewhat. And so I tried not to get too far down that path. And this is pretty much is, is one of the directions that I went in the maximal way. Um, I also realized the importance of instrument construction. You know, I kind of had the idea just to put them into a box. I didn't want to get too deep in there. So this one, I kind of went very far. I used the laser cutter to make this intriguing shape. And you can see I filled in these holes here where there had previously been two motors that served as a generator. I think I, I, yeah, that's another thing I've been holding on to. I built a number of these instruments in a workshop, and I just felt like I was very fancy. It was, I was very proud that day that I led the workshop for some really intensely bright, experienced academic people, um, some of whom I'm still in touch with. And they were able to follow along in an afternoon, and we built a bunch of generator instruments. And those are some of the best ones. Um, and they're all gone, you know, their people are all over the world, so I kind of miss them. You can see this is where the buttons were. So the idea with this one is you held it here and you kind of bowed it here and the sound came out here. Now, one thing about the acoustics of speakers is they tend to try to make sounds equally uh, resonant or flat in all uh, sound ranges, low, mid, high, whatever. But instrument bodies tend to be designed to only work over a few narrow ranges, like a couple octaves, two, three octaves, maybe five. I mean, obviously a piano, you can hear it over the whole range, but something like a trombone or even a guitar, they limit the range so they optimize it so that it makes its frequencies well and then you play it in a group with other people. Just going to check the camera, see how much disk space I have here. Not be too long-winded here, but try to get everything out. So um, I really didn't know how to, how to do all that. I was aware that there was a huge tradition of guitar making, and I absolutely didn't want to get go down that rat hole because you know it takes hours and months and years to make these guitars and you know I had to balance my time so I came up with this construction method where I had the laser cutter cut this interesting cello shape it's the same on the top and on the bottom and it was actually in a participant I believe it was Peter Bennett in that group I said okay I've got these I don't know how to make an instrument now and he said make this this little plus shape which were these pegs so I think I made them that night on the laser cutter cut all these like tabs for these to go in and then glued them in place and then I'd also gotten a special there's a huge sale this is just all the little things that attach to these memories there's a huge sale going out of business I think Pearl Art Center and that's where I bought this uh, very nice uh, veneer it's like 132nd or 164th an inch and obviously it's not professional I mean look at all the crazy glue I've got attaching it on there it's obviously very clumsy you know, it's just like hot glue but you know it's sealed up pretty decently you can kind of hear some little acoustic resonance in there it wasn't highly you know calculated or anything but one thing getting back to the acoustics of speakers and instruments once like acoustic instruments once i got them in there 
I wanted to have something like the F-holes on a guitar, and I didn't know what size to make them, so I constructed this instrument specially. You see, it's got a scale there, 6543210. That's the number of inches, and there's these little zigzag lines that are on the quarter-inch mark. So what I did is set up a gigantic experiment in this one room. It wasn't like a particularly acoustically dead room, but I figured, you know, it's the best I could do. And, I, for, you know, I thought in my mind I would just have many days to test it. It took like a whole day just to test this. What I did is I played a bunch of uh, sweep frequencies through the speaker here and then sawed it a quarter inch at a time and made a whole bunch of measurements of the computer and I went and plotted it so I could try to find where the most resonant points were. The results weren't all that interesting, honestly. There was one point about halfway through where I saw the acoustics made a change. It was kind of like over here it sounded this way, over here it sounded this way, and the difference was not all that great. So good thing about that was it made me realize that uh, that was another rat hole and I should stop doing it. So, you know, it's probably time to get rid of this. It's just such a, I, I think it's a beautiful object. I actually like the way it sounds. And I told myself, I mean, I can, as I'm talking, I can feel the body resonating there. I told myself, yeah, you know, it's, it's over, but maybe I could just make a little speaker out of it, you know, like for a desk or something like that. You know, it's still a good speaker. And, you know, over like the years, it's been like five or six or more years, I, I just don't have space for like a funky speaker like this anywhere. There's only one of them, you know, so typically speakers you want to. Um, it's quirky and it's kind of interesting, but, you know, there's a lot of quirky kind of interesting stuff. And this one is not highly functional, so I think it's just time to get all these lessons out of it and say goodbye and start using my space for some modern projects, because this project is kind of dead. Man, this thing's really solid, by the way. I'm twisting it. It's not budging an inch. Not at all. So, you know, it's hard to let go. I'm still still feeling that, ooh, yeah, just set it up somewhere and have an interesting speaker vibe. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, it still needs, like, power source and amplifier, all this all this stuff. So, you know, I'm just going to just gonna let go. You know, it's, it's been good to me. I learned a lot. Now I got, like, some great documentation. I'll take a few pictures and I'll watch this video when I need to remind myself of all the various lessons I've learned. You know, I mean, just the laser cutter, it just gave me so many wonderful memories to use that thing. It was so fun. I got really good at it after a couple of years. You know, I could cut these edges with just the right power settings very fast, very accurately. You know, I got to know the kerf, and I got to know what kinds of wood were good, and could make solid things like this in a hurry. And I was also proud that this is the first time I ever put a body on this, you know. So it's really, really hard to let go, but I'm just going to have to... You know, keep this tape around that I'm making now, and I uh, hope that does the trick. Alright, goodbye little speaker. Basic Body 26, Resonator Panel Test. Ooh, it's so official looking.